Uh, welcome uh, to uh, another advanced topics lesson. This is this concerns uh, what I call the light equations. Um, first, let's talk about the terms that factor into our equations. Uh, the first one is C, the speed of light. Uh, in a vacuum, uh, it's been uh, both measured as well as um, theoretically determined that the speed of light must be 3 times 10 to the 8 uh, meters per second in the vacuum. Um, there are two other terms that uh, are related to one another. One is called wavelength. This is the Greek lambda. Wavelength is the, um, much like the distance between two waves on the ocean. It's considered the distance between two consecutive wave crests. And then I guess you could have done two, cons two consecutive wave troughs. But we do crests, and if we're talking about red light, the distance between two crests uh, is 650 nanometers. That's why we use nanometers at the scale, because we can use what I call normal numbers uh, as quantities in describing uh, distances or other uh, magnitudes. Now, of course, when you use the formula, uh, everything is in terms of the base unit meters. So you guys are going to have to convert, if you were to be given nanometers, you'd have to convert to meters. And remember, when you use a conversion factor, we say that in every one meter, there are um, one times 10 to the ninth or one billion nanometers. So take my word for this, it's 6.5 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. That's what we plug into the formula that I'm going to introduce shortly. We also have a term called frequency. Uh, frequency, how frequent something happens. Uh, we use the term cycles per second. Cycles per second, sorry about that, I need to cross that out. If light has a frequency of 5, for example, it means that every second, 5 wave crests pass a specific point. Uh, so, for example, if, um, let's say that I start this uh, photon of light at this point, and then in one second, this point winds up over here. In other words, this, from here to here, can travel this past this point in one second. I would say that this photon of light has one, two, three, four. It has a frequency of four cycles per second. Now what I've done is I've drawn two photons, one that has a frequency of one, two, three, four, and the other that has a frequency, one, two, three, four, five, has 11 uh, crests. So I imagine that uh, between this and this point, uh, the, this particular stretch of light can travel in one second. So I say within that period of time, this has a frequency of four, this one has a frequency of 11. You should notice something that when you have a rather low frequency uh, photon, it means its wavelength is larger. When you have a very, very low, higher frequency or a higher frequency, if you notice, the wavelength contracts. That means that between wavelength and frequency, we have what is called an inverse relationship. Now that's going to factor into the construction of the equation. By the way, the units of frequency are cycles per second, which of course we, or the IB, like to write as cycles, seconds to the negative one. There are two remaining terms. <clears throat> that's going to, these are going to factor into the other equation. We have E that stands for energy. Uh, we're still going to measure that in joules. So, I mean, if, if they were to give you, let's say, uh, kilojoules in the equation, you'd have to be certain to change that to joules. Um, there's another constant, you know, whereas the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, that's always given to you as a constant. Uh, Planck's constant is equal to 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. It'll make sense when we talk about it, why the units are a joule times a second. Well, let's get right into it. Before I talk about the question, notice they give us a specific frequency here. Let's look at that formula that we're using first. It says the following. It says that the speed of light 
is always going to be equal to the product of the wavelength times the frequency. By the way, frequency can also be written in that uh, uh, another Greek symbol, this one right here. Um, I said that the speed of light is a constant. Um, we said 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And uh, we want to solve for the wavelength. That means that this is x. Uh, they've given us the frequency. Notice it's a really, really big number. I mean, we really packed a lot of wave crests into one second, an almost unimaginably big number. 1.45 times 10 to the 15 cycles per second. Let me point out something first. Notice that in order to get meters divided by seconds here, I have to have a unit that I can divide by a second. Well, that means this is going to have to be a certain number of meters. Just as I said before, wavelength has to be done in meters. Let's solve for this since it's a, a pretty trivial math problem. 1.45 divided into both sides times 10 to the 15th. 1.45 times 10 to the 15th. Let's go to the Mount to Wall calculator, which says, so this would have to be the wavelength. This is the distance between these two consecutive wave crests for this per particular uh, kind of light, this uh, electromagnetic radiation. Now, just so we don't forget, uh, what if I asked you to convert from this unit, meters, to nanometers? Maybe you want to pause uh, for a second, see if you can come up with the conversion factor and the answer. I'll wait for you. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, again, you should have paused it, but I, I actually wasn't waiting. <laughs> well, I should be said the team. You didn't need to know that. Uh, your calculator probably would say 207 nanometers. Right? So, let's move on to the next equation. Now, we're going to be using the same frequency that we used before, 1.45 times 10 to the 15 cycles per second. Uh, let me introduce the second equation. Uh, if you're dealing with a question that's either giving you energy or is asking for energy, uh, an equation that you absolutely can't get around using is this one. It says the following, that the amount of energy in joules is equal to something called Planck's constant, which, as I said up top, have the units of joules times seconds and times the frequency, which, as we said before, is still cycles per second. Well, look why this makes sense. A second divided by a second cancel, cancels out, leaving us with joules, which is exactly what we want. Also, we should establish what kind of relationship exists between energy and frequency. Well, let me use that. Let me make up a number. Let's say that H is, has a value of 1, just to make life easy. And let's say that the frequency of a wavelength was 1. Well, obviously, the product of that is 1. Well, what if I decided that I was going to double the frequency? What would the effect on the energy be? Well, if I double the product, I have to double the energy. That means that there is a direct relationship between energy and frequency. As the frequency of a wave, uh, of, of a photon of light increases, so does its energy. It's a direct proportion. One doubles, the other has to double as well. Now to the question at hand. Referring back to this frequency, it's saying if you have, if the photon has that frequency, how much energy must be there in that frequency, in that uh, uh, wavelength? I'm oh, sorry, I'm stumbling over my words. Uh, how much energy must there be in that photon of light? Well, as I said up top, you're always given Planck's constant. It'll be on a, let's say, a, a reference sheet. 6.63, which I rounded from the 6.626 to make life a little easier. Life is tough enough, as we know. 10 to the negative 34 joule time seconds. And the frequency, as I said, is 1.45 times 10 to the 15 cycles per second. Let's see what that comes out to be. I'll mount to wall calculator. 9.61 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Uh, super. Now, what if I wanted to convert that number of joules to kilojoules? Well, 
uh, if I have 9.61 times 10 to the negative 19 joules, and I wanted to find kilojoules, well, of course, whatever I'm going to goes on top. You know, if you'd like, you could use the 0.001 up top and the one downstairs, or we could stick with scientific notation. Uh, this is the same as 10 to the negative 3. And 1 is 10 to the 0. Let me teach you a little trick, by the way, since I have some time. Uh, I don't actually even have to take out my calculator. I can just use a rule for multiplying and dividing with um, scientific notation. First of all, if I'm doing division, then I'm subtracting this exponent from that. So negative 3 minus 0 remains negative 3. So then the product is a negative 3 here. And for multiplication, I can add that negative 3 to that negative 19 and get, that's right, 10 to the negative 22. 9.61 times 10 to the negative 22 kilojoules. Well, that was pretty short and sweet. Uh, if I can remind you one thing, oh, well, not reminding you, if you weren't in class, I told the class this. For homework questions 8 and 9, you need to use both equations. For example, in number 8, uh, they tell you you have 1.00 times 10 to the negative 21 joules. Uh, your photon has that much energy. And we want to figure out what the wavelength is. Well, it should jump out of you that although energy is in this equation, wavelength is in that equation. So what do I do? Well, first, I'm going to plug in uh, energy to the first formula. Uh, I'm going to plug in Planck's constant. I'm going to solve for frequency. As soon as I have frequency, I can plug frequency in the other formula. Uh, I know the speed of light. I'll plug that in, and then I can solve for the wavelength. Okay. Well, I hope that was helpful. Um, happy homework. I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.